So I wanted to film this process of connecting Active Captain, uh, which is an app on my iPhone there. They have it for Android as well too, to the Garmin and to get those two to communicate together. So it's, it's actually pretty simple. Um, all you have to do is go into your settings and I can't find my settings. There we go, settings. And I wanna turn my Wi-Fi on and I'm gonna to connect to my Garmin boat Wi-Fi, which is what I named um, this guy over here. And we're, we're only partially through my setup here right now. I don't have my wires hidden or anything like that. So just so you know. And I go back into here. So this says that there was a, a new active captain detected. And um, am I the owner of the vessel? I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to select done. And I'm going to say okay. So over here, I inserted a blank memory card. So I've already done that right here. So that was step one, insert a blank memory card, wait for card information to be displayed. Let's see. So I put that card back in. Oh, there it goes. Wait for that card information to be displayed and then select the button, select the button to set the card as the active captain memory card. So I'm going to go down to create active captain memory card and I'm going to format it. It is a brand new card. It has to be uh, smaller than 32 gigs, which is what this one actually is. So I'm just going to tell it yes to erase all the data. It's a blank card, as I mentioned. So if, if you're using a card that has something on it, you want to make sure you back that up. I'm just going to select that. And um, I've actually never done this before, so we'll see how long this is going to take. Um, it looks like it's done. So I'm going to come back over here and hit close. There we go. Um, so it can actually see my devices. As you can see here, it says there is, um, there's an update available. So I'm actually going to click that. And um, I'm sure I'll be able to figure out how to add this update. Oh, there we go. View support center page. Let's see. Oh, so if you notice what it says right here, disconnect from Garmin boat to download the software updates to your mobile device. So I have to go back into my Wi-Fi. And now I can download it. Yeah, so it, it took a, a moment there for it to notice that I actually I was back connected to my Wi-Fi. So what's going to happen here is I'll I, we'll wait and see how long this takes to download. Um, it's actually going pretty quickly. Um, I have uh, wireless here, so it's, it's not too bad. Um, I think I'll put it on pause and I'll let it download for you guys, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how to get it over onto this device here. Yes, I know we also have a fish finder here too. Um, I'm going to have to figure out uh, what I'm going to put in that place. Um, so definitely a couple little more steps to do here um, to finish this setup up, but figured while I'm doing this for the first time, I might as well take advantage of recording it because there's just not a ton of information out there on this particular topic. All right, so that took a few minutes um, for that to download. As you can see here, it's asking me to connect to my chart plotter now. So I'm going to go ahead and hit connect and all right, so I have to go back. So uh, this is my Wi-Fi here at my place. I've got to go back to my Wi-Fi settings, choose Garmin, because that's what that guy is. And now I can select continue. And hopefully we're going to see something pop up over here. There we go. It says connected successfully. I'm going to hit done. So it is right now transferring the software. As you can see, it was communicating with, with the Garmin to see if there was um, any information that needed to be passed to it. Nothing has popped up over on the screen here, but as you can see back here now, it's downloading, pushing all the data from here to here. They do communicate um, 
pretty effectively and it, it was really easy to set up that network. So not a big deal at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll pause it again and I'll let it download and then we'll come back and see what's next. So we're coming up here on 99% and there we go. It finished on the phone. Software updates are ready for installation on your system. I'm going to go up here and select review. And I'm going to come up here and choose install now, which is already selected. Update takes a long time to complete and must not be interrupted. Okay, so I'm going to select yes. There we go. So you can see that it is downloading. Um, actually, I can't imagine it's going to take terribly long, but we're going to let it do its thing and, and I'm definitely not going to interrupt it at all. Um, one quick thing that I do want to mention is that the Garmin um, chart plotters don't connect directly to your Wi-Fi. What they do is they combine with the Active Captain app. So Active Captain kind of manages your download and then it communicates with the Garmin and puts that information over to it. So you can see um, we're already up to 90% already. So it's actually going way faster than I anticipated it would. And, uh, and that's a good thing. So it looks like it's gonna reboot right now. Um, I've only turned this thing on a few times, but it looks like um, each time to reboot or to boot from a fresh uh, power up takes about 20 to 25 seconds or so. Um, you can see I've never seen that before. So software loading and um, it looks like we're going to be, this looks like the normal boot process here. We're going to restart. Oh, there we go. It is definitely updating. And I'm going to let it do its thing and we'll come back and we'll check on it here in a little bit. Um, a couple of other things that I wanted to talk to you about and to show you, and I'm gonna flip my screen around here really quickly. Uh, there we go. So one of the biggest things that, um, the, one of the biggest questions that I had was, I, I have a boat that I added, I repowered. Um, so I had a really low hour, two stroke, 90 horse Yamaha, only 165 hours on a, on a 2006. And I actually, um, I sold that motor and I repowered it with a uh, 2016, I believe it is, Yamaha F200 four stroke, awesome motor. Um, but I wanted to take advantage of all of the data that you can gather um, from the, the modern day motors, right? So um, I didn't even know that NEMA 2000 was a thing until a couple of weeks ago. And I actually built a NEMA 2000 network uh, on my boat for all this stuff to communicate together. So I did, I wanted the capability of the chart plotter, um, but I also wanted to be able to manage the data that my engine is pushing out. And it's actually really inexpensive to do. So there is a wire that runs from the outboard and I fished it up through the helm, it comes out over here. Um, that's wire number one. Um, wire number two runs to the transducer, which fishes up and comes up to here. And wire number three is a power wire. And as you guys can see on the back here, you can see where they go into the back. Now, none of this is mounted completely yet at this point, but they go into the back here. This will be a really neat, clean installation when it's all said and done. Um, and then this thing pops on and off really easily. Um, the NEMA 2000 network itself, I'll show you what that looks like. And again, this is part way through the install as well, but, but this is it. Um, so this is where the power comes in and I, I'm not really gonna show you too much in here, but it runs into a power line there. Uh, and then I'm not sure which one's which here, but um, one of these uh, goes to the Yamaha motor and the other one goes up to the Garmin unit um, that's, that's um, up on the dash here. So I'm gonna mount this, this will all get mounted and all this stuff will get cleaned up. But the reality of it is I paid about $80 for this I paid just under a hundred bucks or so for the, uh, the, the cord that communicates with my engine. And um, I am now able, flip this again. And I am now able to get all of that data, all the telemetry that comes from the motor. And it's 
it's crazy the amount of stuff that is available. And I, I search YouTube for this information for forever. I'm an off-road guy. You know, I, I produce a lot of off-road content. Uh, this is kind of my first boating content. And it's simply because I spent a couple of weeks trying to research, hoping to find the answer to um, a lot of these questions. And I honestly couldn't find it. So I thought, well, I'm going to make a video, maybe help some people out that are, that are in the same boat as I am, right? So quote unquote, um, same boat as I am, pardon the pun. Let's go back and check the install out here. So updates complete. Would you like to restart the device? I'm going to select OK. And now it looks like it's just going to go through that boot process again. So that's all said and done. It's, it's all reinstalled and um, works really, really well. I'm going to pause it until that does, and then we'll come back and we'll chat about one other thing. So there's one other thing that I want to talk to you guys about, and, and this is really what spawned my research in trying to find out you know, this information. So I knew that the Garmin units would communicate with the engine. I know the engine is going to send it data. This is, a, as I mentioned, a Yamaha F200. So I know Yamaha's at the top of that game as far as um, all that NEMA 2000 communication. But my curiosity was, I know what that motor, what that engine has the capability of sending. How much of that information can we get from Garmin? The big thing for me is I wanted to know engine hours. You know, that for you guys, you may not care at all, but mine's a repower situation. So the hour meter that's on the boat doesn't coincide with the actual hours that are on that motor. They're actually really close, believe it or not. Um, but I have the ability now to determine exactly how much or how many hours is on that. I'm going to show you how to figure that out. And it's not set up like this from the factory. So I'll show you a really quick, easy way. So if you guys navigate to numbers, all right, and you go ahead and click select. And the I changed all these. You can see engine hours are here. Now it's not gonna show my engine hours because I don't have the engine started. I'm actually sitting in my garage and I'm not gonna start my motor in the garage because I don't wanna burn the water pump out. But in any case, you can see that I've set mine up as a, a there were some default things. I wanted a triple odometer. I wanted engine hours. I wanted water temperature and the engine temperature to show up when I put this here. You can have whatever you want. And here, it's not the way that they have this set up. It's actually easy once you figure it out, but it's, it's not all that intuitive. So you're looking for a way to modify this, right? So I'm looking for a button here that says settings or, or customize or something. You're not going to find that. But instead, if when you're in numbers, you hit menu, you can go to change numbers. So go ahead and select that. And you can see right here that these are the things that I've had set up. So if I'm like, if I don't care what my max speed is, right? Let's say I want to replace that. I can go to select and now I can go in here to all of these different um, data points and I can grab whatever I want. So let's say I want to look here in the engine. I'm going to go ahead and click select. So you can see that if I want to put my trim, a digital trim readout, I can have that show up in just numbers or coolant pressure. Like I don't really care about coolant pressure. I just want to know if it's overheating or not. But you know, if you're in a commercial fishing vessel, you know, that, that's going to be a lot more important to you than me. Engine fuel rate. Um, there are just so many data points here. Boost pressure, you know, engine fuel economy. That's actually a pretty decent one. So, um, I will show there, there's engine hours. Um, I want to show you, let's say I'm going to do engine fuel economy. So if I just click select, look now engine fuel economy is down there. And, um, if I go back to home and I'm in, you know, maybe I'm in engine or I'm, ch I'm in charts and I'm like, oh, I want to check those numbers out. And I click select engine fuel economy, my engine hours, the engine temperature, all of that data is right there available for me and you can customize it however you want. Uh, if you're like, you know what, I really don't care about engine fuel economy. Well, if you just click menu, change numbers, go down here to engine fuel economy and click select. You can come in and pick whatever you want. So whether it's, you know, data you want about the water or, or GPS conditions or navigation, if you're sailing, I'm certainly not sailing. Um, you can go into fuel here and there's just so much information. Like 
honestly, there's information about stuff that I don't even care about. Uh, <laughs> you know, maybe I should, perhaps I should, but there's information in there that, you know, my needs are a little bit different than maybe what your needs are. And I really like that this um, is customizable. Uh, I have not used the unit on the water, but just the data that I'm able to gather from that engine makes it worth um, going to uh, going to a newer unit for me. This is the the um, UHD, so it's the Echo Map Garmin Echo Map UHD 64 CV. So uh, we we fish in the inland Bay area and the Maryland area, and I wanted to have access to those to that saltwater information, that data that's there. Uh, so this was a better option for me. I mean, it's actually cheaper if you're going to fish in the salt water. It's actually cheaper if you buy that map first because I, if you buy it um, pre-installed, it costs around $100. I think if you buy it afterwards, you know, just as a as a data chip that you put in there, um, it's it's significantly more. Is it maybe double the price? I, I believe it actually is. And then if I want to do the inland lake stuff, that one's actually pretty inexpensive to add to it. So um, you can just swap those those in and out. I hope that this helps. Um, alleviate any questions that you guys might have. I hope this answers uh, a lot of you. You know, I've gotten a lot of my information. I've just, you know, can't sleep and, and I'm up um, checking out the whole truth, uh, just a forum. And there's a lot of guys in there that know a whole heck of a lot about um, the, the marine industry and boating in general. And um, that's where I got my information to figure out how to do this. I just figured that I would put it in a video to help um, any of you that are they're in the same boat as me trying to customize your boat to work for your particular situation. Have a great day. Subscribe to our channel. This is our first marine post. So if there's any other questions you have about the Garmin unit um, or the NEMA 2000, like I'm a novice when it comes to this. So um, for me to be able to actually get it to work with you know very little knowledge about it and, and just by reading about it, if I can do it, you guys can do it. And if you have questions, I'm happy to help you along the way. Have a great day.